Here's the surprisingly simple way to cut out and refine hair in Photoshop so you can have a nice selection of your subject's hair and remove all of that fringing. Now to get started, we need to of course remove the background and the easiest way to create a selection of our subject is with the select subject button. But I want to get a slightly better result from the beginning by using the cloud detailed results version. Accessing any of your W shortcut tools, we'll go up to the select subject button in the options bar, choose the drop down arrow and choose cloud. Now we'll click select subject from the options bar while our image layer is highlighted. This will give us a slightly more accurate selection than the default select subject button. And with this selection active, let's add a layer mask to that image layer. This removes the background, but it's hard to tell how good of a selection is happening around our hair. So let's add a new color fill layer by going to the adjustments icon and going to solid color. I'll choose a middle gray color like this and click OK. I'll drag that color fill layer below my image layer, and now we can better see what is going on. There's obviously a lot of fringing happening here, and there's even some missing bits of the background still showing through in our subject's hair. So this is where the Selected Mask workspace will come into play. To access Selected Mask, simply double click on the layer mask of your image layer. Within the Selected Mask workspace, the first thing to do is choose your view mode. When you're working with hair selections, I'd recommend using the on white or on black settings. For this example, I'll choose on black because it allows me to see the fringing a little bit better in my image. With the opacity of this view mode set to 100%, so I only see 100% black in this case, we have a few different options to get started with. The first option is to choose the refine hair button. Clicking on refine hair in the options bar, Photoshop will try to remove some of that fringing and get rid of the background showing through in your subject's hair. In this case, the refine hair button didn't really work for me and actually made it worse by adding these weird edges around my subject's hair. So I'll press command or control Z to undo that. Although it didn't work for me in this case, it is still a worthwhile option that can sometimes get the work done for you. But if it didn't work, such as in this example, then we have to go to our second option, which is the Refine Edge Brush Tool. Choosing the Refine Edge Brush Tool from the toolbar with the Add To option enabled and a hardness set to 0%, we'll go ahead and choose a refine mode. Generally, when you're using selected mask to refine hair or fur, you're going to want to use the object aware refine mode. However, when you have a lot of color contrast between your subject's hair and the background, such as what we have in this image, we can get away with the color aware refine mode instead. So I'll click on that and click OK. You can choose either refine mode depending on your image. Now with that looking good to go, I'm just going to paint over the areas that I need to remove from my subject's hair that is showing the bit of the background still. Now there are no major areas of the background showing through our subject's hair, but there's still a ton of fringing happening. And this is something that we can't really deal with much further than this in the selected mask workspace. So for now, I'm happy with this result and we're going to use a separate adjustment to remove the fringing. To exit the selected mask workspace, set your output to layer mask and this will apply these updated settings to your current layer mask in your project. With your output good to go, I'll click OK. Now back in our original project, we have those refinements from the selected mask workspace added to this layer mask. But of course, we still have all of this fringing left over. And to remove this, we can use a color fill layer and an inverted layer mask. This is a trick that I love using for fringe removal. With the image layer selected, I'll go to the bottom of the layers panel, go to the adjustments icon and choose solid color. For now, I'll choose black as my color and I'll click OK. Now I want this color to only appear within the visible pixels of my subject. We can do that with a clipping mask by right clicking on that color fill layer and going to create clipping mask. Now our subject is filled with the black color fill layer, but we only want this color fill to affect the fringing in the image. So to begin, we're going to duplicate this layer mask onto the color fill layer. Clicking on our subject's layer mask, I'll hold alt or option and click and drag that layer mask to the color fill layer. 
This will duplicate that layer mask and place it on our color fill layer. Clicking on that layer mask of our color fill layer, we now want to invert this mask by pressing Command or Control I while that layer mask is highlighted. Now what this has done is essentially selected the outer one or two pixel border between our original selection and the fringing. So now this color fill layer will only target the fringing and it's not going to target any of the subject. Therefore, all of that fringing has been filled with black as you see here. Now, of course, this doesn't look very good because the color is wrong. So let's go and sample a color from our subject's hair. Double clicking on the color fill thumbnail, I can go ahead and sample a color from my subject's hair, and that is going to be used as the fringe fill color. I'll go ahead and click OK once you're happy with that. And now to see this cutout in action, I've added a new background into the photo. Now, as you can see here, turning off that color fill layer, you can see how it removes the fringing and adds a bit of life to our subject's hair. We can always update this color just by double clicking on the color fill thumbnail and then sampling different colors around our subject's hair to find something that looks better in our current photo. But now with this complete, let's look at the final before and after. Turning that original image on and off, we can see how we have successfully cut out all of that hair using some simple tools in the Select and Mask workspace and removed all of that fringing using a color fill layer that is only targeted to that outer edge of pixels in our selection. The Select and Mask workspace should be your first stop when you need to cut out hair in Photoshop, but depending on the complexity of the background, some of these techniques aren't going to work for you. Instead, you need to follow a slightly different technique that I outline in this video that explains how to cut out hair even from a business busy and complicated background. Definitely go and watch that video next if you want the best results from your hair selections.